Well, and of course, I had a plan in my head, and then I decided that my sign for Lucy's design team needed to be more representative of the art that I do, so I decided that I'm going to do more of a mixed media piece on here. So I have a few things out. Um, I have some of these little gold tip flowers that I had got from Lucy's store um, quite a few months back, and as well as some of her laces. Um, and these were all purchased like uh, quite a few months ago, so I don't even know if I, I know she's got some of these in her store still, but then there's some others that are not in her store. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just picking out some different um, pieces that I'm going to use um, in here, incorporate this with the flowers. I have some other little flowers here. Um, I have a little chipboard corset that I've already laced some ribbon through, and I've got this little fabric bow with a little pearl center that I'm going to glue right there. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to use that right here in the corner. Right now I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to lay everything out. I have some sewing themed charms out. Um, I'm probably going to put some scissors in here. And, um, and I have some little w wooden uh, bobbins, spools, sorry, not bobbins, spools. And I'm going to incorporate those in here. So right now what I'm doing is trying to figure out my layout. I've got my hot glue gun going. And I'm just going to start gluing uh, my assemblage on here. Including the laces. I'm going to um, collage those on as well. And then come back, mask this part off. And then I'm going to gesso all around it. And I'll be back after all that's done. Or I'll be back before that's done because I just kind of wanted to share what I used here. Um, I did use LA098, which is this beautiful trim right here. It's been covered up here on the sides, um, but I did decide I wanted to leave the top and bottom open and have just a focal point here. I'm trying to keep this um, kind of a sewing themed because when... I think of Lucy's store, that's kind of what I think of, is more, her trims uh, are more for me anyway, used as, you know, like a more textile art um, used in, you know, and that's one of the things I love about these trims is that, like this one that I used, whoops, I haven't glued that on yet, one that I've used here is LA-140, and that's this trim right here. And what I love is that you can cut these apart to use as appliques. So you don't have to think of this as just trimming a piece out using the entire yardage as is. Cut this apart to use it, at, you know, the different pieces. And that's what I've done here. So I have um, cut out the pieces that I wanted to use in the corners. Um, I further embellish that. Again, I'm going to be just sewing over this entire thing so the colors did not matter at all. But anyway, I did want to share that I used LA-140 right here, which she does have in her store, and LA-098 right here, which she does have in her store. I need to reorder that, as a matter of fact, because I love that um, trim right here. And again, anything that's left over, like I had some that, you know, these little fan shapes here that got left over when I was cutting around, and um, I... I'm going to be using those. I throw those in a, my applique scrap pile and I'll use that in a, a fabric book, a needle book, whatever. And um, so I have everything together here. Again, I wanted it to be kind of a textile theme so I have all kinds of little um, things spread out throughout the assemblage here. Little mini clothes pins, little metal hangers. Um, there are those little spools, thread spools. Anyway, um, so I, I, now I'll be back after this has been adjusted. Oh, and I did mask this. And the important thing to remember, I started flipping this around as I was gluing things on, and I realized I was going to get really lost on where the top of the piece was. So I did, when I masked this off, I did use a pencil to draw an arrow going up to show how the top was. And what I used to mask off this also are these little post-it um, strips. So I just tore post-it tape, I mean, and I tore it into strips 
laid it all out and that's how I'm masking that off. So I did use to adhere all of these um, laces, I did use gloss heavy gel. It doesn't matter, you can use matte or gloss. Because again, this is all getting gessoed, so it really doesn't matter. I just used what I had. Okay, I'll be back. I did put two coats of gesso on this, and it has completely dried. So we're good to go with our spraying. So I have a couple of colors out. I have a Lindy Stamp Gang, Cocklebell's Coral, one of my favorite colors. And then I have a Heidi Swat Bronzer out. So I'm gonna try to hit that over this too. We're just going to see. We'll just see where this goes. So I'm using my light color first. And then I'll come back. With this color. And then let it dry and figure out what I'm going to do. Wow, that may be too dark. I've never used that before. I didn't realize it was that dark. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna have to rethink this. Because now I don't know what colors I'm gonna use. So I'll figure that out and be back. I had to go through a few paint uh, sprays to get what I, you know, the color I was going for here. So it's just kind of a mess of colors <laughs> that I was playing around with. You really have to just play around with it until you're happy with the uh, finished result. So this is all dry now. And what I'm doing now is coming in with some gesso. And I'm going to do the dry brush technique. And it seems like I have a loose hair here on my brush, but I guess not. Okay, and I'm taking it and I'm tapping it into the lid just to get it really dry. So that I can hit the raised area on... Some of these elements that I placed down. So it's hitting some of the buttons, my resin pieces, my little swirls. Some areas I'm being a little more heavy handed with it. Just trying to give it just a little bit of a shabby look here. Hmm, that was a little bit wetter brush. I should have tapped that off more. butterfly. Some more of those buttons. Then I'm going to wait for that to dry and then I'm going to come back and hit this with more of a metallic color just so those raised areas will pick that up more, that, which is why I'm putting the gesso on. Whoops. You know, like so. So I'll come back in and hit it, like I said, with uh, some kind of a metallic color. And then probably what I'm gonna do on top of that is rub some Inca Gold over it. And I'm thinking I may use this old silver on top of this. But right now I'm gonna hit it with, what color? Glory of the Seas Gold. I 
Okay. So I'm going to let that dry and then come back after it's dry and hit it with this. And then I'll lift all this off and we can see what the finished piece looks like. Okay, so I hit all those raised areas, including those laces with the old silver. Yeah, old silver, Inca gold. And I really do like the way that this turned out. So it just highlighted those raised areas. The other colors that I sprayed on are still in the background. And I just really keep hitting my uh, thing there. So this is how that turned out. Couldn't be happier. So even though Lucy's laces are so gorgeous, you don't want to cover them up. As a mixed media artist, I gotta tell ya, they do make a project just perfecto because it's just, I, I, I think this is just the coolest thing. I love, love, love my little sign. So anyway, this is my finished project. I love how it turned out. So again, you could just use any image that you want here, you know, in the center, um, whether it's a family portrait or you're doing just a vintage piece with a vintage lady here or whatever, you know, those images we love to use. And uh, the canvas just looks really, that canvas cloth looks so nice back there. And I know you can't see it on camera, but it's just very textural and you just want to touch this piece so i love how it turned out all right that's it i'll see you guys later